I, I would like to see uh, us get back to a time when uh, you know we're that we're be, just being kind to one another. Oh gosh, uh, yes. Uh, being safe. Uh, using common sense uh, and I don't know I don't know I don't have all the answers I wish I did I know it can be done hello everyone this is David Raleigh superintendent of Liberty County Schools here with another edition of Hawk Talk. Today I have with me Mr. Brad Turner, and uh, I've known Brad in different capacities with uh, within the community and the school system, but uh, you get to meet him today. And so for those of you that don't know Brad, I'm gonna let Brad introduce himself to you. All right, well, my name is Brad Turner, and uh, I'm actually uh, in my second school year of uh, being able to teach, substitute teach in the district, so I've been uh, pleased and fortunate to do that. Uh, I I am married to my lovely wife, Beth, and here in a couple of weeks, uh, it'll be 22 years of marriage, so that's great. Uh, we do have two sons. Uh, my oldest, Biven, is a freshman at the University of Kentucky, majoring in civil engineering, so God bless him. And my youngest, uh, Baines, everybody knows Bainesy, he's a sophomore at uh, LaRue County High School. And, uh, uh, you know, I come, I come to you all today, uh, you know, from a, from a business community perspective, uh, and I have the, the u unique ability of being able to uh, work alongside some of the greatest staff at LaRue County uh, School District has to offer. And so uh, I'm able to bring a lot of different things uh, that, uh, uh, you know, from the outside inside. So uh, that's, that's been a wonderful experience that I've been able to see and share and, and learn. Uh, and it's just been a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. Uh, I'm a retire. I retired last uh, August of 2020. Uh, I had a wonderful 25-year career uh, as a licensed funeral director and embalmer. So uh, if you've ever been to Bennett Bartram Funeral Home or Dixon Rogers Funeral Home, you've probably seen me. So yep, that was me. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a wonderful time to be uh, uh, talking about community events. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're having our 50th anniversary of, of our Lincoln Day celebration here in a couple of weeks. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things mm -hmm. going on. Uh, you, we're still in school. Uh, we're able to meet, uh, and uh, it's just uh, awesome to be here. Yeah, well, and, and we are so proud to have you yeah. in, the, in, the, uh, in the school system now. So as you mentioned to, to folks, you, you, you left the uh, job as a, not only just the funeral home director, but also as a- Co-owner. Yep. Yeah, yep. co-owner. Mm -hmm. And now are you still a, a, a coroner or, or is that- No, uh, I've, been, I've been deputy coroner since 1996. Yeah, okay. So when I retired, I, I resigned from that position as well. Okay, gave it up as well. And so, so I initially met Brad, we're both members of the Hodgeville Rotary Club. And yep. uh, so uh, the thing that impresses me th about Brad is, is he, he's, he's genuine, he's, he's, uh, he, he keeps it real. Uh, so when we talk about at Rotary Service Above Self and, and giving of yourself and, and helping others, uh, Brad, you, you, you exemplify that. Can you, can you talk about the importance of that and why that is important well, sure, in any know, community, let alone a small right. community like Lurie County? Uh, you know, service above self, and I think this year's motto is uh, helping others to serve uh, as well, uh, especially those that are less fortunate. Uh, because uh, you know, we live in a we live in a uh, a time to, uh, where uh, you know it's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. And so that's what we're here to do. And uh, I, I've on my third year being president. Uh, maybe Mr. Raleigh, you think Mr. Raleigh would be a good president? Uh, I think so. Uh, but anyway, uh, we 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 love working together, uh, and uh, and service above self. Uh, it goes a long way. It speaks for itself, and uh, we we're just uh, we're just so blessed uh, to live in a community uh, like Hodgenville and Larue County and this school district, and uh, uh, we're just so blessed. I mean, just think about it when you go home tonight. Think about how blessed that we are uh, to have the things that we. And I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, do you want me to just go? Go ahead and speak. Well, here's, here's yeah. one of the things that, that, that uh, you know, what, the th something that you and I have in common. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I've, I've never worked in a funeral home. Okay. I've never been a coroner, but I have been a substitute teacher. So yeah. I, I want to yeah. explain to us 
the, your interest, because you, you spoke to me about this long before you retired, mm -hmm. is that this is that once you retire, this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to be a substitute teacher? Well, I mean, you know, communication skills has always been uh, easy for me. And uh, 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 I have a desire to uh, work with uh, the younger generation because, you know, that is the future. And uh, that's just something that was near and dear to my heart. Uh, you know, working with kindergarten students uh, has been, uh, you know, a, a something that's that scared me to death. But, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I need to step out of my comfort zone. And, uh, you know, you, you just think about this. The, when the year started, I was in ROTC. OK. Right. And now look where I am today with working with the students that I'm with today. So uh, that that's going from one extreme to the other. And so uh, uh, that is just a blessing in itself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as soon as I think that I've got it all figured out, something else happens and I meet someone else. And then I'm like, oh, OK, well, we're going to do it this way. Uh, and it's just there's no two days alike. And that's what I like about it. Well, and I, I think, and this it, this speaks to what we talk about in, in education. I mean, th th there's the the what we call the pedagogy part, where you've got to have those skills. But mm -hmm. if you can build relationships and you can work with people and you can work with kids, then then teaching kids is not a problem. Right. And, and that's what the, that's what you're able to do so well. No matter wh where I observe you, whether I observe you at the mm -hmm. at the elementary schools or at the middle school or at the at the high school, you're, you know the kids are engaged and, mm -hmm. and they I think they respect you. And uh, you know they uh, uh, respond to you real well. So we're appreciative to have you in, in that role. We hope you. Oh, I love it. Continue love to, it. to do yeah. that with this. It's, it's like, hey, we still need subs. So uh, those of you out there that are listening, c come to the central office, uh, apply. Yeah, and they need bus drivers too. So a absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So tell us where where, where are you originally from? Right? I'm originally from a little place called Cave City, Kentucky. Uh, you know, you, Horse Cave, Cave City. Mm -hmm. I went to a place called Caverna. Uh, some people in LaRue County think that's a dirty word, but that's where I came from. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I used to, I, I remember when I went to college, uh, this professor was making fun of me because I was a big fish in a little pond, uh, you know, at Caverna. And then I'm coming to college and I'm just a little bitty fish in a great big ocean. And uh, with a serious look on my face, I told him that Caverna was a hard place to get into. What I didn't mention was in the wintertime, when it gets cold, the back door stuck. Yeah. So it, it was hard to open. Yeah. So I didn't lie to him. So it really is a hard place. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So get, getting back to the community thing, and uh -huh. again, that's that's one of the things that, that we hope to do with LaRue County Schools, because we appreciate so much uh, our, our, our community members and our community leaders and, and our families. And so one of the things that we want to do is, is, is we want folks to understand that, you know, when you say Leroy County Schools, we're, we're one big family. Yes. Because sometimes I think people look at the school system and think it's a, it's a separate entity and, and really not. Right. So, so to talk about that from that community aspect yes. in, in your perception of that. You know, in my career, I have always been an advocate for positivity to success, and it's a process. I mean, it's a proven fact uh, that students draw power from the positivity of That's their right. teachers. That's right. And, uh, you know, working, working in the uh, uh, owning a business and working with public service and and providing those types of services for the families that I serve uh, now uh, working in the school system. Uh, uh, I see a lot of positivity that I would like to talk about. Uh, number one, uh, you know, just and it begins at birth, basically all the way up, especially uh, pre-kindergarten on up all the way to high school. And that is uh, practicing good citizenship. Yeah, okay? uh, what we need to realize is. Uh, uh, we we were born in this country. Most of us were born in this country as a citizen of the United States and how important that is. And, you know, uh, whether it's learning the Pledge of Allegiance in preschool here on College Street or kindergarten or wherever, uh, all the way to uh, taking an ROTC class, just knowing the words and how important that is. Uh, my, my son, I just mentioned earlier my son's 18 years old. Before he stepped out of his bed after his 18th birthday, he got online and applied for the 
with selective service mm -hmm. and applied and registered to vote. So I was really proud of him. So I think we're doing a good job of practicing good citizenship. Uh, citizen was a vocabulary word last week in the class. Oh, yeah. And I was, uh, you know, it's hard to understand kids a lot of times with masks on. And I was working with a student and we were talking about uh, the definition of a citizen, someone that belongs to a city or a state or a country. And then I said the word citizen, <laughs> citizenship, and I kid you not with his mask, I didn't understand what he said. And I said, could you repeat yourself? And he said, I haven't seen that Star Wars movie yet. <laughs> and uh, and and I laughed, and 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 then we he started laughing. I get choked up thinking about it. And uh, when we got calmed down, he said, uh, he said, Mr. Brad, they call me Mr. Brad. Uh, I I don't know when the last time I laughed so hard. And uh, you know that just warms your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's something that uh, also uh, when you when you're thinking about the uh, the uh, the process of positivity to success, you have practicing good citizenship, mm -hmm. and something that you always say is generate critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you said that when I was at uh, uh, Southern for the seventh grade last year. You talked to the students about uh, we want to uh, uh, generate critical thinkers. We want all of you all because there's going to come a time, uh, you know, whether they leave LaRue County, but there is going to come a time. There is going to come a day when uh, uh, they're going to be on their own. And, and you know, it, it's good to have a plan. So I think we do a good job of preparing. Uh, I have a good friend by the name of Jesse Blankenship, and he said this to me one day. He said, uh, uh, if, you have 30 if you have 30 cows and 20 eight chickens how many didn't and I'm like what's he talking about and so you know I'm, I'm a visual thinker I'm, I'm, I'm seeing 30 cows and 28 chickens and I'm saying what what do you mean how many didn't and then when you think about it 30 cows and 28 chickens so if 28 chickens that mean 10 didn't so you really have to think about it and then uh, last week in class we were talking about Mrs. Boone you know our principal at the middle school uh, she she bought a hundred donuts for, for the school and she paid twelve dollars a dozen, and uh, depending and, and assuming that there's no sales tax, how many does three donuts cost? And uh, you you have to kind of pick and choose mm -hmm. the information and bring it. Of course, you know, if if it's twelve dollars a dozen, then you know three donuts going to cost three dollars. So it's those types of critical thinkers uh, that we, we we want you to think outside the box. And, uh, you know, you, you, you speak on that all the time, Mr. Raleigh, and I appreciate it. And I think we're doing a good job. Now, something, the third avenue uh, along the process of positivity to success is, uh, and something that we need to work on, is developing, uh, we, need, uh, we need to teach these students and uh, to develop uh, a pride in their work ethic, okay? And I think that would be the last, the last step, especially coming from the business perspective. Uh, I, you know, well, for, for instance, I had a couple of virtual students last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went out, you know, they were at home doing their work and they decided, hey, I'm gonna go out and get a job. And I talked to a couple of them after they got their first paycheck mm -hmm. and you would have thought it was Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and, and I'm sure you remember your first job. My first job was at Jerry's Restaurant. I washed dishes. This was in 1986, up $3.35 an hour. And when I got my check, it was like $35 or $40. But you would have thought it was Christmas. And so, uh, you know, we, I think I think that those are some things we need to work on. Yeah, so one of the things that, that I, I talk to our folks about and the, and the way I raise my boys is is that, uh, you know, autograph your work mm -hmm. with, with excellence. Yes. It doesn't matter what the work is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if, you know, if, if you decide I'm going to college after I leave high school, if I'm going to go into workforce, or if I'm going to go to the military, whatever I'm going to do. You know, as Abe Lincoln said, whatever you decide to do, be a good one. Be a good one. <laughs> right. So, so you know, and so I appreciate that. And yeah. you're absolutely right. We, we've, we've got to, it's, it's more about the, 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 you know, caring about the quality of our work yeah. and making sure, you know, like if your students out there watching, you know, I'd always tell my students, make sure you're turning in your very best work. Right. You do the very best that you possibly can. Yeah. And, it, you know, not only that, but pride of ownership, uh, uh, pride in the way you look, the way you speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way, and you know, we, we, in this, and you know, I know when we grew up, it was totally different. You know, we, we had to talk to adults. And so I've noticed, especially being in the high school setting, a lot of, a lot of students uh, uh, struggle with speaking to adults. And, uh, you know, I don't know how to fix it, uh, but uh, that's something that, you know, because people are now interviewing, and my wife had some inter four interviews today, all Zoom or online or whatever they call it. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, used to, you had to walk in, look somebody in the eye and shake their hand. Uh, 
uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, we just don't, you know, have, operate like, you know, that anymore. So, uh, but still, speaking to adults well, funny, is very important. It's funny you would say that because, you know, my one word is, is connect. And, and, you know, and, and so it doesn't matter whether I'm talking to someone like you mm -hmm. or if I'm talking to a group of students uh, or, you know, an auditorium full, full of our staff members. It also it means with, with my wife. And so, like, you know, that's one of the things that we talked about was in this day and time, it seems like we're always looking at the phone. So I've made it a conscious effort to turn that thing off, yeah. put it away so that when she and I are having dinner, we're, right. we're, we're connecting yeah. again. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we get, get to our kids back to, to that of mm -hmm. really paying attention yeah. and, and taking a, a, a genuine interest in the mm -hmm. person they're talking with because, you know, there's a book that John Maxwell has that, you know, everybody communicates but few connect and that kind of resonated with me because mm -hmm. you know yeah we all kind of communicate but how, how often do we really connect with that individual right. crossroads right. so i appreciate you saying yeah. that yeah so because we have the whole world at our fingertips yeah. but yet can we go down the street and order a sandwich yeah. you know that's that's right so uh, so let me ask you this you know obvi i mean mm -hmm. obviously you've, you've um you're, you're really a hawk now you know, i'm a hawk you, 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 yeah i've actually i was telling caleb uh i've actually lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else. So I'm a hawk. And when you marry a LaRue County girl, yeah. yeah that's yeah, right. So. That's right. So, so by proxy, you're, you're a hawk. By proxy. So, and, and you've raised some hawks. Yes. Kicked uh, one other nest so yeah, far. He's yes, in the UK. Yes. Uh, go big blue. That's right. Um, thinking about the, the, the future in LaRue County that you want to see for, for, for your boys mm. and for, you know, your grandchildren and even, you know, even the, the, the kids that we have in school now, what do you envision? I mean, obviously, you would you would envision a perfect world, but you know we don't live in a perfect world. Uh, you know, we I, I would like to see uh, us get back to a time when uh, you know we're that we're being just being kind to one another. Oh gosh, uh, yes. Uh, being safe, uh, using common sense, uh, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. Uh, you know, I, I, I can tell you how I was raised and, and, and how I grew up. Uh, but, you know, we have so much technology today, so I know it can be done uh, where, you know, we can walk down the street and be proud of who we are and where we came from. And, uh, and we can speak upon that uh, without fear of being ostracized or persecuted. And uh, that, that speaks loudly to my heart that one day that we are able to do that and that we can be united again as one nation and uh, one community and and th and it's that fabric that carries on to the next generation and uh, you know uh, yeah, you know we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of 9/11 you know um, our, my kids were not born during that time and and just just think about how you felt the day after and how united the country was uh, that wouldn't it be great if we could just think like that all the time absolutely yeah, you and I were talking earlier that it'd be nice if uh, you take out the 9/11 part and yeah. think about the 9/12 of how unified oh, we were yes, yes. And, and how we believed in each other there yes. was no divisiveness yeah. was and that was just 20 years ago yeah, we were just yeah. one big family. One big family. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Well, Brad, mm -hmm. I, listen, I, folks out there see now why I, I respect you so much and why we wanted to have you as part of Hawk Talk yeah. because of uh, you can really kind of epitomize you know what it is to, to be to be a servant leader. And, and I appreciate all that I appreciate you do. it. Yeah. Appreciate all you do for the community. Yeah. I appreciate all you do for our schools. And uh, it's a pleasure to call you a friend. All right, appreciate Thank you, it. Sir. Thank you. And that'll do it for this edition of Hawk Talk. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a good evening.